A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! Abigail Marlowe, wife of Sam Marlowe, storekeeper in the little pioneer western town of Waterford, walked with her head held high, and the heels of her button-topped shoes beat a triumphant tattoo on the boardwalk as she made her way toward her husband's general store. Abigail sniffed with disgusted contempt as she passed the Longhorn Cafe, and as usual, she hastened her steps and averted her eyes. Within a few moments, Abigail Marlowe was entering her husband's general store. Well, here's Abby now. Are they all here, Sam? The whole committee? I guess they are. Now, let's see. There's Jim Ferris, Sheriff Slade, uh, Widow Pickens, Banker Jonathan Wright, and you and me. <laughs> How do you do, Abby? Hello. We're all to come over here just like you said, Abby. We're all waiting to hear what that important news is you've got. Yes. Well, as you all know, we're all appointed as a committee to establish a church here in Waterford. Mm -hmm. Now, here's why I sent word to Samuel to get you all together. I received a letter from St. Louis today. Got a new preacher? Yeah. What's it say? Are we going to get a parson? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, please. Uh, read the letter to us, Miss Abby. I intend to, Jonathan. But first, let me recall the letter I sent to our former pastor in St. Louis... As you recall, I told him we were building a small but suitable meeting house here, that Waterford was an established community in dire need of spiritual leadership. Read the letter, Abby. Cried Samuel. As town banker, Jonathan, you're on the building committee. How soon will the meeting house be finished? Uh, Jim Ferris can tell you better than I can. Uh, how about it, Jim? Well, I reckon it'll be ready by the time we get a parson here to hold the meetings in it. <sighs> it'll be ready before Abby gets around to reading that letter, looks like to me. Quiet, Samuel. In my letter, I told our former pastor we wanted an able preacher who could attract and hold a congregation. He better be able in more ways than one if he's going to persuade Blackie Rand to clean up that cafe of his. <laughs> Fact is, we'll need a two-fisted fighting type of parson here. Eh, hey, Sheriff? If he isn't, he'd better leave Blackie and that cafe crowd to me, Sam. When you two get through with your nonsensical talk, I'll read the letter I received. That's what we're waiting for. Go ahead. Here's what it says. My dear Mrs. Marlowe, 
pardon the delay in answering your letter of a few months ago, but it has taken considerable time to find someone to fill your need. However, I have persuaded a young man, a recent graduate from a theological seminary here, to accept the call to your community. Well, to I'm sure you'll find the Reverend Ward Matthews to be of great spiritual worth. Gosh, we're getting an educated parson. Quiet, Samuel. Stop interrupting. It goes on to say, and also he's most anxious to turn his endeavors toward fields where there's an opportunity to do the most good, rather than to accept an established city church. The Reverend Matthews will arrive in Waterford the latter part of May. Well, I'm certain your congregation will find him to be a very spiritual leader, sincerely and so forth. Now, what do you all think of that? Well, uh, uh, wait, hold on, everybody. It's past the middle of May right now. And the next stage from the east is due about the beginning of next week. There won't be another this month. So the parson must be coming on that stage. That's right. Well, he'll be coming in about five days then. There's still work to do on the meeting house. And listen, all of you. We must have everything in readiness for the Reverend Matthews. Uh, Jim, what more is to be done on the meeting house? Well, we've got to put the rest of the roof on and get benches inside. Uh, the inside should be painted, too. Then we've got to get busy. Jim? Well, what do you want, Abby? You go spread the word around so most every man in town will be out in the morning to work on the new meeting house. I'll go tell the boys right now. We'll get it finished. Don't yeah, worry. Uh, Mildred? Right. Yes, Abigail? You come home with me. We'll fix up our spare room for the parson. That'll have to do till we can build him a place of his own. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> oh, Abigail, I can hardly wait to meet him. He's <laughs> coming here to Waterford to meet his congregation. Not just you, Mildred. <laughs> Uh, come along. Uh, goodbye, Abby, Mildred. Goodbye. I must say, Sam, your wife certainly gets things done. Yeah, but she ain't the one that does them. She just tells the other folks what to do. <laughs> I'll bet that big, able parson that's coming here won't be bossed around by Abby, though. Uh, bringing that parson here is going to change things plenty around Waterford. And for the better. Mm. Well, Sheriff, shall we go? During the next few days, every available man in Waterford turned out either to lend a helping hand toward finishing the meeting house before the arrival of the Reverend Matthews, or to stand nearby and watch the efforts of those who were working. Among the latter group were Blackie Wren and his right-hand man, Bull Martin, a heavy-set man whose brawn was of far more value in running the cafe than his brain. After watching the activities for a few moments with his mouth set in a sneering grin, Blackie spoke. I understand they're expecting the parson to come to town on the next stage, Bo. <laughs> I guess he'll do his best to take a whale out of our customers. Who's he going to do that? By preaching to them. Getting them to stay away from the cafe on Sundays and warning them about gambling and so on. Uh, nobody will listen to him. No? Now, let me tell you something, Bo. Over at Dry Rock, I had a fine cafe and was making plenty of money. Till the preacher came there. He's a tough hombre, one of those fighting kind. Oh, what happened? He up and told me to clear out a... T got a bunch of men together, and one night he led them into my place and tore it apart. He had those hombres all riled up, so I didn't wait to argue. I lit out the back way and left town. You didn't have me around then. Nobody's going to clear out this cafe without tasting plenty of lead. And the first one I'd aim at would be that preacher. Bull... I always figured it'd be bad luck to plug a preacher. Well, you could always leave him to me, Blackie. No. I... I've thought of another way to handle this one. How do you figure on doing it? By discrediting the new parson before the whole town. What do you mean by that? I mean making him look like he isn't any different from other men. You know, make him out to be just as bad as any of them. How are you going to do it? Look, we'll meet the stage and see what he looks like first. Then I'll tell you what I plan to do. Come on. To get back to the cafe. As the two men walked away, they failed to notice an Indian who had been standing nearby within earshot of their conversation. Tonto, Indian companion of the Lone Ranger, watched Blackie and Bull walk toward the center of town. Then, mounting his horse scout, he rode off toward the hill. Get on, scout! Oh, Tariq, he must have it. Aye. 
didn't expect you back from town so soon, Toto. I mean, not get surprised today. Oh? Get him tomorrow when stage come to town. <laughs> so that's it. You want to watch the stage come in from the east. You're usually not so curious. Well, new preacher come on stage, and me hear talk by Blackie Rand and Bull Martin about new preacher. Blackie Rand and Bull Martin, huh? Ah, and talk not good. What do you mean? Well, Blackie say, then meet stage, look at preacher. Then he make plan against preacher, so people not want him stay in Waterford. Oh, I see. They plan to discredit the parson in the eyes of his congregation. Is that it? That's right. That's very interesting. Well, tomorrow, Tonto, I'll disguise myself as a rancher. Then you and I'll be on hand when the stage comes in. Maybe we can find out just what it is Blackie Rand is planning to do. afternoon, the church committee waited with other curious onlookers for the arrival of the stage from the east. Having a preacher in Waterford is going to mean a lot to this town. Yeah, that's right, Sheriff. Maybe everybody will get religion. We won't need you as sheriff anymore. Quiet, Samuel. Yeah. If the Reverend Matthews makes a better man out of you, I'll be satisfied. <laughs> oh, look, Abigail, here comes the stage <laughs> now. Oh, I'm so excited. Calm down, Mildred. <laughs> Remember, you're the widow, Perkins, not a young school girl. <laughs> well, that's something Abby won't let you forget, Millie. Oh, here's the stagecoach. Oh, there. Oh, oh, there. Oh, there. Oh, oh, there. Oh, oh, there. Do you see him, Abigail? Be patient, Mildred. He'll be getting out in a moment. Hey, look. I see someone with one of those funny collars on. That must be the parson. Why, it's Samuel. He'll hear you. Hey, he's getting out now. Well, yeah. Good gosh, look. Great day. Is that pint size hombre the new parson? Abigail, the parson's such a little man. Well, quiet, here he comes. I beg your pardon. I'm looking for Mrs. Marlowe. I'm Mrs. Marlowe. I presume you're the Reverend Matthews. That's right. How do you do, Mrs. Marlowe? Oh, welcome to Waterford, Reverend Matthews. These are the other members of the church committee. My husband, Samuel. Glad to know you, Mr. Marlowe. Howdy, parson. We were sort of expecting a big man to take over our meetings. Then you will be quiet. Meet the rest of the committee. Sheriff Slade. Sheriff Slade. The widow Pickens. Mrs. Pickens. Our banker, Jonathan Wright. Yeah, how do you do, Parson? And Jim Ferry. Oh, Mr. Ferry. Well, Parson, as Sam said, meaning no offense, you understand, we were sort of expecting a much larger man than you. There's a right tough element in this town that needs a bit of religion beat into their thick skulls. Sheriff. Sure. I'm here to teach religious faith to all who wish to listen. But each man is master of his own soul. No man can be made to believe in the doctrines of religion by force. <laughs> very well said, Parson. Very well said. Uh, Sam, get the Reverend Matthews' luggage. Uh, come along, Mr. Matthews. The widow Pickens and I will show you where you're to stay until we can give you a place of your own. You're very kind, Mrs. Marlowe. Well, what do you think of that? Sending a half-pint Parson out here. Yeah, maybe he'll be all right, he just won't get anyone to go to meetings. That's what I think. I wonder what Miss Abby thinks about him. Abby didn't look any too well pleased, but she didn't let on. Howdy, Sheriff. See the new preacher arrived. Oh, I should say the little parson of Waterford. <laughs> As they intend to clean up this town. You ought to get a real man to do the job. That's enough out of you, Blackie Rand. If we want your opinion... Hey, come we'll on, go Sheriff. Help me with the parson's luggage. Anyway, I don't like the air around here right now. What's the matter, Blackie? Don't they like your company? It yeah, looks like it. <laughs> Bull, did you see the little parson that got off the stage? Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't stand up against anyone around this town, man or boy. <laughs> I heard him talk, Bull, and he sounded like he had a persuading way about him, even if he isn't very big. Yeah. Bull, before the week is out, the little parson is going to wish he'd never heard of Waterford. You can mark my words on that. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. As Blackie Rand and Bull Martin walked away after watching the arrival of the stage, a tall, well-built rancher also left the scene and sauntered toward the edge of town, where he was joined by an Indian. The rancher was really the Lone Ranger in disguise. Did you see the parson get off the stage, Toto? Ah, him a little parson. Yes, he is a small man, but he seemed to be alert and intelligent. I uh, noticed that he didn't carry a gun. It'd be no physical match for anyone who might want to pick on him. Blackie Rand, Bull Martin watched little parson leave stage. Yes, I saw them. The overseas is coming. A uh, clump of trees here in the edge of town make good meeting place. I know you were right. Blackie and Bull Martin are planning trouble for the new parson. Ah. Well, for the present, we'll go to camp. Those two will bear close watching. Here we go. Easy. Easy, Silver. Uh, and me watch him. Good. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Following night, Blackie and Bull sat at a corner table in the Longhorn Cafe. After making sure no one was within hearing, Blackie spoke in guarded tones. Bull, I got a plan worked out against the little parson. I'll try it out tomorrow evening. What do you got in your mind, Blackie? Now listen, last night and again tonight, I noticed that right after supper, the parson walked from Marlowe's place to the meeting house on the edge of town. Counting on him to do it again tomorrow night. He was alone each time. Go on. Now, here's what you ought to do. Follow him to the meeting house. Then, when you're sure nobody's watching, go up to him and say what I tell you to say. What do you want me to say to him? Tell him there's an hombre in the back room here at the Longhorn who's been hurt bad. That he's asking for a preacher. Well, who's going to be in the back room asking for a preacher? Nobody. Just tell the little parson that. But why do you want me to tell him that for? Because I want to get the parson here. That's why. Tell him the man might die and is calling for a preacher. Tell him you'll bring him here in the back way. Well, maybe he won't come with me. He'll come with you, all right. Preachers are supposed to go to dying people if they ask for him. What happens after he gets you? You'll find out after you bring him here. <laughs> I promise you one thing. After tomorrow night, none of those church people will want the little parson to lead their meetings. You can bet on that. As usual, on the following night, the little parson walked to the meeting house. After spending a short time inside, he came out, closing and locking the door after him. Well, howdy, parson. Good evening. I was told I'd find you here, parson. Will you, will you come to Longhorn Cafe right away? The Longhorn Cafe? That's right. You see, parson, there's an Aubrey there in the back room. He's been hurt bad. He keeps calling for a preacher. Says he don't want to die without talking to one, so I... I understand. I'm glad you came for me. You'll come with me then? Of course. Well, here we are, Parson. This is the back door to Longhorn. Go right in. Good evening, Parson. And where's the man who sent for me? I sent for you, Parson. But I understood. That is, he told me someone was hurt. And... Nobody's been hurt yet. Maybe this will hurt a little. Hey, what'd you do that for, Blackie? You knocked him out. Help me pick him up and put him in that chair at the table. All right. There. Now what? You notice, Bull? The little parson looks just like a drunk, sitting there with that head on the table. Oh, what's that got to do Look, with what you... we'll spill some whiskey on the front of his coat. We'll put a bottle and half-empty glass on the table in front of him. Then what? And when I go out front and get some of the boys to stage a fight, you can go get the sheriff. He's on the church committee. When he looks in the back room and finds a little parson like that... <laughs> <laughs> Say, Blakey, that's a right smart idea. <laughs> a little parson will wake up to find he's in disgrace, so he'll have to leave town. <laughs> now, I'll get things set, and you can go get the sheriff. Oh, Kimasari. What's happened, Dotto? 
Little Parson. Me see him go into back door cafe with Bull Martin. I see. Here, Silver. Better hurry. They're telling what Black King Bull are up to. Sit big fellow. One Silver. Come up, Scout. Meantime, the sheriff was in his office talking to Jim Ferris when... Hey, Sheriff. You better come up with the Longhorn. Some of the boys are cutting loose again. Blackie don't want his cafe wrecked. Carnation, take it. There's more trouble in that place than there is in the whole county. Come on along, Jim. You can be a deputy and give me a hand. In the cafe, Blackie was urging the men on. Make it look real, boys. Be careful of the furniture. Just rough it up a little more realistic. Sure looks like the real thing now. I'll fire a couple of shots. That'll make it seem real. Hey, oh. hey you shot down the hanging lamp. Hit Blackie and knocked him off. Good. Look, Giles caught fire. Hey, hey. hey. the wind is flooding fast. Let's get out of here. Yeah. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto approached the edge of town, they heard distant shouting. Something's happened, Tonto. Ah, Looked like crowd in front of Longhorn Cafe. Look, Kimasabi. Me see light of fire. The Longhorn's on fire. Parson may still be inside. We've we'll got the back way. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Meantime, in the back room of the cafe, the little parson gradually regained consciousness. Oh, what hell? Smoke. Smoke coming under the door over there. <coughs> the, the cafe's on fire. I, I can go out the back way. Help. I can't get out. Parson, don't, don't leave. You. The, the man has struck me down. I'm hurt. I can't. Oh, help me. All right. Parson. I'll try to get you out. I, I wouldn't blame you if you did leave me. I was going to run you out of town. Don't talk. Save Save your strength. You, you're so heavy. I, I can hardly move you. Guess we're done for. Flames in back room now. Never got a chance. But you got nerve, little parson. I, I want you to know I, I'm sorry. It, it isn't nerve, my friend. It's, it's faith. <coughs> if this is the end for us, it's his will. We'll, we'll both have faith. <coughs> Hold, oh, Silver, hold on. Hold, Scott, hold, fellas. Big fellas, fellas. The flames have reached the back tunnel. Ah, uh, and that's bad. Steady, Silver. Steady. I'm not an outlaw, but never mind that now. What are you doing back here? Is everyone out? Speak up, man. There's no time to lose. Uh, I brought two buckets of water. The little parson was inside in the back room, and Blackie, he's inside. Hello. Uh-huh. Here, throw water on this blanket and hurry. Uh-huh. There. Hey, you're not going in there, are you? What do you think? I'll wrap this wet blanket around me. Hey, I'll get some of the other spring water around here. It's bad you go inside now, Kimasabi. Two men are inside, Toto. What would you want me to do? Uh, me be ready to help. You go now. Good. What's this Bull Martin tells me about a friend of yours going inside to get Blackie out? Uh, that's right. Little Parson in there, too. Hey, did you hear that, Sheriff? What would the Parson be doing in the cafe? Darn if I know, Jonathan. You ask Bull Martin, him no. How about it, Bull? I don't know anything about it. Him not tell truth. Now, maybe three people die in fire. Keep your eye on Bull, Jim. If they don't get out, I got some questions to ask him. There goes the front part of the cafe. Oh, oh poor yeah. chaps. They haven't a chance now. You put water on blanket. Me go in now. No, you can't go in. It would be suicide. Me go. Hey, look. Coming through the back room. Quick. Get pails of water. We help. Hello. I haven't got one of them. I had to drag them out. You hurry. Me help. Hey, look. The roof is caving in. Hurry. Hurry. They made it just in time. Like in the parson are alive but unconscious. Do what you can for them. Get busy, man. They need attention. I'll remove this blanket and help you. Hey, you're wearing a mask. Does it matter? Let's do what we can for those two men. Come to think of it, stranger, after what you just done, it don't matter a bit. Good. Now let's get busy. 
After receiving first aid, Blackie and the parson were taken to Abigail Marlowe's home. Later that night, the church committee stood near the two chairs in which Blackie and the parson sat propped up with pillows. Reverend Matthews, I called the church committee together to give you a vote of confidence after the sheriff got the facts from Bull Martin as to why you were in the cafe. Uh, Perhaps you should have shown more discretion by not going into such a place, uh, even though you did think someone... Hold on there, Mr. Wright. Don't you talk to the little parson like that. He went there because he has faith. That's what his religion means, and I'm all for it. Uh, I did him a dirty trick. And he turned around and tried to save my life. I think the little parson's wonderful. From now on, nobody's calling him the little parson either. It's all right, Blackie. I I rather like it. Well, you do? (laughs) Good enough. Then little parson it'll be. And every Sunday from now on, the hombres who used to hang out in the Longhorn are going to be sitting right in your meeting house. Me included. Well, what do you know about that? Little Parson did more in one night than I've been able to do in this town in years. <laughs> All you got is guns to back up what you try to do, Sheriff. But the Little Parson has faith, and it sure works. It's been said, my friend, that faith can move mountains. By the way, who was the man who carried us from the burning cafe? We don't know, Reverend Matthews, but they say he was actually wearing a mask. Sure he was. But that mask hid the face of another man who believes in the parson's kind of faith. I found out that he's the Lone Ranger. Well, for my money, the little parson and the Lone Ranger are two fine hombres. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.